Let us pray together. Awesome and gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the light and the warmth of outside. We pray that as we come together to dive into your word, that you would open our minds, our ears, our eyes, and our hearts to all that you would have us learn, know, and feel this day. We ask this because we want to come closer to you, draw nearer to you and to your Son. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> so our scripture passage today comes from Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights, that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. If a child, then also an heir through God. <laughs> I like this passage because this is about as Christmassy as Paul ever gets. Right? If you think about it, Paul, not really big on Christmas, not really much, but he at least acknowledges that Jesus was born of a woman before moving on. And so this is Paul's Christmas message. And what I really like about this passage is there is a difference between how it was up on the screen, and I wanted to read it like that. The word children. And where I said we are adopted as children. We think about that and we know what that means, but that is not actually the word that is used by Paul. Paul is very, very explicit. And he says, son, not child, son. You are adopted as a son, and as a son, an heir. And when I say that, does anyone go, seems Cutting out half the population. So when Paul is writing this letter, he's writing it to people who know the law in Rome. And in Rome, in order to inherit, you have to be a son. Sorry, daughters, you don't get it. I didn't make the rules, so don't come after me. But in order to get anything, in order to receive anything from the household, in order to get any of the father's bounty, you have to be a son. To the point that a Roman household with no son would adopt someone to be the son of the household so someone could inherit instead of giving everything to that guy your daughter married. I say that as someone who loves his in-laws. What's fascinating here is this is a little tweak of history. Because Paul, earlier in Galatians, is also explicit when he says, there is no male or female, there is no Jew or Greek, there is no slave or free, for all are one in Christ. And so when someone was reading this letter from Paul, there may have been people there who said, oh, he said son. That means you ladies are out of luck. And someone could have said, no, they're sons too. That's not how this works. Why not? Because that's not how this works. When has God ever been limited by how it works? But to be a son, you have to, no, you don't. I am God, I say you're my son, what else needs done? But even that guy who doesn't look like you, my son. 
What about that girl, especially my female sons? What about that slave? Don't you dare talk to my son like that. It, is this interesting thing that God does where he looks at a system and says, I'm going to change how everything works because the system you have made is broken and you're going to have to fix that. But until you do, I'm not wasting grace. It's like a kid hits a baseball through your window and God says, I'm remodeling your entire house. <clears throat> It reminds me of a conversation I had in college when we were all at that age where we ask kind of ridiculous questions like, can God make a boulder so heavy that God can't lift it? And I can tell you after four years of college education in religion and three years of getting a master's degree in divinity, I can say definitively, the answer to that question is, maybe. I remember a friend of mine said, can God make a round square? And I was feeling particularly clever, and I said, sure. He just swaps the definition of circle and square. And he said, that's cheating. And I said, why? Because it makes the question irrelevant. It wasn't a relevant question to begin with. <laughs> but that's not fair. And I remember thinking, I'm not sure how much God cares about fairness. I'm not sure how much God cares about fairness when it's set against caring for his children. I asked permission to tell this story, so it's okay. At Christmas, I got a gift from my family that they worked very hard on. My wife and my sister in particular spent a lot of time and effort getting this thing done. They got me a picture of my kids in Green Lantern shirts. He is my favorite superhero. And they put it in a handmade wooden Green Lantern symbol as the frame. Beautiful. Lovely. And the gift was handed one of my children to carry to me. And after two steps, it was dropped. And when it was brought to me, it was, in fact, broken. And my reaction was not fair. My reaction was not fair to my wife, or to my sister, who had put so much time and effort into this. I opened it, I saw that it was broken, and I said, oh well, good thing it wasn't fragile. We laughed, and I looked at Sam, and I said, I love it. It is perfect, thank you. Because it was more important to me to make sure that my son knew that I loved him and to not spoil his Christmas, that it was to be fair to my wife and sister who had worked so hard. I never thanked them until hours later. That was not fair, but it was loving to my son. I want you to think about how God is always going to lean on the side of loving you. How we create models of fairness, things that make sense to us. God is not limited by what we decide is fair. God cares more about you than that. That if the world says the only people who get the bounty of the Father are the sons. God says, great, everyone is a son then. And when people disagree, he says, you don't make the rules here. This is my house. Everyone's a son. Everyone's a son. What about the sons that don't like you? It's a good thing I'm a big God who loves everyone. 
What about the daughters? Sons as well, until you decide to change your mind. What about the people in shackles? What about the people no one loves? What about the people forgotten? Those are my sons as well. But that's cheating. That's not what that word means. That's not fair. Does God care about fairness more or less than he loves our children? As we have celebrated this Christmas season, we have celebrated with family and friends. We have traditions that we share with one another. We have children who maybe spent a long time coming to share those traditions with us. I know I celebrate every Christmas because it is one of the few times my sister gets to come home. And my children associate Christmas with seeing Aunt Stephanie. And it warms my heart. And if anyone ever said, your sister is less because she's not a son, I don't think I would be very fair to them. And thank God he isn't either. God loves you more than your sense of fairness. God loves you more than who you think you are. And if you need to be a son, then a son you shall be. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Awesome and gracious Lord, we thank you and we praise your holy name that no matter who we are, we are your son. That in the face of those saying we should not have grace, we are told explicitly that we get it. That the bounty of the Father is given to us regardless of how that has to come about. And God, when we feel our hearts lean towards fairness more than caring, remind us that we are your son. Remind us that we are your son even if we don't always feel like it. Remind us that we are your son even if that word doesn't match our definition. Remind us that you are a God who loves us more than whatever words could ever mean. And that when there is a choice between fairness or giving a child love on Christmas Day, you will always choose to love us. Thank you. And thank you for sending Paul to remind us. A man who, if any could say this is unfair, he could point to himself. A reminder that Someone who followed the law was a Jew among Jews, a citizen of Rome, was able to say, yes, all are sons of God.
never outside of God's sight. Let we who worship Jesus Christ go forth basking in his divine light. Let us go knowing we have been created sons by God the Father. Let us go knowing that no one can take away the love that is in Jesus Christ. And let us go knowing that wherever we may be, we go with the company of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.